Christine McVie, born Christine Ann Perfect on July 12, 1943 in England, had a musical spark from a young age. Growing up, she was drawn to the piano, finding solace and expression in its keys. Her father was a concert violinist and music professor, and her grandfather was a professional organ player. In her teenage years, she honed her skills, crafting a unique style that would later define her sound. The band Fleetwood Mac provided Christine McVie with all the trappings of stardom, yet it came at a profound cost. Keep watching as we unveil some rare photos, untold tales of Christine McVie's life. After college, McVie pursued an arts degree at the Mosley School in Birmingham. It was there that her official music career began. She met guitarist Stan Webb and Andy Sylvester, who invited her to join their band, Sounds of Blue. However, the band couldn't sustain itself, and before her graduation, they disbanded. It was at this point that Christine McVie took a daring step that would change her life forever. Christine McVie then moved to London and took odd jobs to survive. Her former bandmates, Sylvester and Webb, who were forming a new band called Chicken Shack, contracted her as their pianist. McVie joined the band as a pianist and backing vocalist. She even wrote their debut song, It's OK With Me Baby. The band's cover of Ellington Jordan's I'd Rather Go Blind with McVie on lead vocals propelled them to international recognition. Later, she left the band in 1969 after achieving the recognition she had hoped for. How she joined Fleetwood. In a 2014 interview with Rolling Stone, Christine McVie shared that Mick Fleetwood, the drummer and leader of Fleetwood Mac, wanted American guitarist and singer Lindsey Buckingham to join the band after hearing the Buckingham Nicks album. However, Buckingham had one condition. He wanted his girlfriend and vocalist, Stevie Nicks, to join too. Fleetwood had concerns about having two women in the band, so he asked McVie to meet Nicks and basically interview her. The deal was simple. If McVie didn't approve, Nix couldn't join Fleetwood Mac. According to McVie, this pivotal meeting took place at a Mexican restaurant. McVie explained, It just so happened that I really liked her. She had a great sense of humor, and we got along really well. So I said, OK, my approval is granted. The very next day, on December 31st, 1974, Buckingham and Nix officially became part of the band. And the rest, as they say, is history. As Fleetwood Mac gained prominence, Christine's songwriting prowess blossomed. Her compositions like Don't Stop and You Make Loving Fun became anthems of a generation. Her ability to infuse emotion into every lyric and note resonated deeply with audiences. Solo pursuits and return to the stage. In the late 1980s, Christine took a step back from Fleetwood Mac to explore solo endeavors. Her self-titled album, released in 1984, showcased her individual artistry and received critical acclaim. Her voice as distinctive as ever carried songs that reflected her experiences and growth. After a hiatus, Christine reunited with Fleetwood Mac in the late 1990s. The band embarked on successful tours, reaffirming their enduring legacy. Christine's return to the stage was met with enthusiasm as fans celebrated the reunion of this musical powerhouse. Touring became a challenge. However, in the midst of all this creativity, Christine encountered personal struggles. The busy schedule of touring and recording began to wear her down. Trying to juggle the demands of a high-profile career with the wish for a stable personal life became quite a tricky balancing act. She mentioned that her fear of flying had turned into a really strong fear, making touring very hard for her. Additionally, the constant moving around was wearing her out. So, McVie went back to England and focused on fixing up her new house. Over time, she grew tired of the countryside, but she worked on overcoming her fear of flying through therapy. She said, I wasn't just tired. I was tired of always being on the move and never really having a stable home. I'm naturally someone who likes to settle down, and all the constant travel was starting to get to me. As they discussed the possibility of a farewell tour, McVie faced a new challenge related to touring. The effects of aging. Physically, I'm not feeling up to it. I have a chronic back problem that limits me. I play the piano standing up, so I'm not sure if I could physically manage it. My mind is eager, but my body isn't as strong as it used to be. Eventually, she made her way back to Fleetwood Mac, rejoining the band 16 years later. They even went on several reunion tours in 2014 and 2015. However, things took a turn in 2018 when Lindsey Buckingham left the group. Christine's Love Life In 1968, McVie tied the knot with John McVie, with Peter Green serving as the best man. Rather than a traditional honeymoon, they celebrated at a Birmingham hotel alongside Joe Cocker, who coincidentally was also staying there. They then hit the road with their respective bands. 
Although the couple divorced in 1976, they remained close friends and maintained a professional partnership. During the production of Rumors, Christine had a romantic involvement with Fleetwood Mac's lighting engineer, Curry Grant, which served as the inspiration for the song, You Make Loving Fun. Between 1979 and 1982, she dated Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys. In 1986, McVie exchanged vows with Portuguese keyboardist and songwriter Eddie Quintella. Together, they collaborated on several songs, including Little Lies. Sadly, they parted ways in 2003, and Quintella passed away in 2020. Christine McVie never had the opportunity to have children despite being married twice, something she deeply desired, by the way. She faced significant challenges as a woman in the music industry. Firstly, finding a partner who understood and accepted the demands of her profession was difficult. The demanding nature of touring and performing made it nearly impossible for McVie to consider starting a family. She expressed, as McVie stated, there were never any children for me. There was always a career in the way. It was a case of one or the other, and Stevie would say the same. The lads went off and had children, but for Stevie and I, it was a bit difficult to do that. Christine's death. She was a member of one of the most popular music groups of the 20th century. Fleetwood Mac vocalist, keyboardist, and songwriter Christine McVie has died. Musicians and fans pay tribute to Christine McVie, the hugely successful singer-songwriter with Fleetwood Mac, who's died at the age of 79. On November 30th last year, at the age of 79, McVie passed away. Her family conveyed the news through a Facebook statement, revealing that she had succumbed to a brief illness while in the hospital. Following her death in November at the age of 79, her cause of death was disclosed on April 6, 2023. According to her death certificate, McVie's primary cause of death was a stroke, with cancer listed as a secondary cause. She suffered an ischemic stroke, a condition arising from reduced blood flow to specific areas of the brain. Additionally, she reportedly had metastatic malignancy of unknown primary origin, indicating the presence of cancer cells in her body without a clear source. Fleetwood Mac shared a band statement in which they said, she was truly one of a kind, special and talented beyond measure. She was the best musician anyone could have in their band and the best friend anyone could have in their life. We were so lucky to have a life with her. Christine McVie's impact on the industry is indelible and her legacy is firmly established. She passed away with a sense of accomplishment, confident that she had made a significant contribution to her world. If you like this video today, please give it a thumbs up to show your support. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you're always in the loop.